Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Before starting, we would like to specially thank Uncrossable and Drunken House Cat for supporting us on Patreon for one year now. Drunken House Cat is actually joining us with his Alasha hate bears to celebrate. David bought Emery's rusty rocks from Bizzlebob. Bali is trying out his Florian farm once again. Drunken House Cat, aka Drake, is bringing his pet deck Alasha hate bears, and Late brought his N1 Rogues aggro combo deck. He did let Thoracle out, so you don't complain. Before we show you starting hands, we would like to announce that we now have our playmats available through Patreon. If you like these babies, check out our Patreon page for more information on how to get one of these signed by the Split Second team and shipped to your door. David is going first and he kept his first hand with an Island, Urza Saga and Scalding Tarn for lands, Mox Diamond, Mox Ember and LED for ramp, allowing for Eternal turn 1 Emery, and he still has Weir of Invention to tutor for a game-winning artifact. Bal Mulligan once and kept a Mountain, Leech Ridden Swamp, Agadim Awakening and Shatter Skull Smashing for lands with some versatility on two of them, quite the flooded hand but mainly aiming for a turn 2 reanimated Sire of Insanity through the Entomb. Withering Boon can always catch someone with their pants down. Drake kept his first 7 with a single Flooded Strand for lands, but with a Chrome Mox for ramp. Cursed Totem can be key at stopping Emery, as well as Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. Grand Abolisher can serve as great protection to have his spells resolve and maybe combo off. He already has Dockside Extortionist in hand, so Recruiter of the Guard might be used to find some combo piece. Finally, Late Mulligan down to 6, keeping 2 swamps and an island with a Mystic Remora at the ready. Unfortunately, being last in turn order, he might feel compelled to pay for it until he's back in the game. Changeling Outcast is unblockable, so he can take out some advantage from it with his commander, as well as Ghostly Pilfer that can become unblockable as well. He's sent to the bottom Sakashima of a thousand faces. Ready for this match? David starts his turn with an island, he follows it with a Mox Ember, and then another Mox, the Diamond one, discarding a Flooded Strand. He also casts a Lion's Eye Diamond and then casts his commander, Emery Lurker of the Lock. It enters and he mills 4, sadly not finding any artifacts. He passes with 3 cards in hand. Bal draws and simply plays a tapped Leech Ridden Swamp, before passing. Drake gets to his turn and casts a Chrome Mox, actually imprinting Thalia, hinting at having other great cards he can't dump. He then plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Plateau. He then casts a Cursed Totem and it resolves, effectively slowing down David's plans. We're now on latest turn, he plays an Island and casts his Mystic Remora before passing the turn, said he couldn't bank in from all these non-creature spells. David plays an Urza Saga, entering and gaining its first ability. He then turns his Emery sideways for something she's not used to doing, attack. Late takes one and David passes. Late asks Baal to feed the fish and he's heavily thinking about it. He plays a Swamp and casts an Entomb, triggering Remora and being unable to pay. He finds a Sire of Insanity and puts it in the graveyard, and right after that he casts a Reanimate targeting it, triggering Remora and desperately hoping it resolves. David ponders for a second and responds with a Mystical Tutor, triggering Remora and not paying. He finds an Intuition to the top. Reanimate does resolve, Bal loses 6 life and he goes to his end step, triggering the Demon, and everyone discards their hands, becoming Hellbent. This looks like it will be a long game. Drake draws, hopes for land, but finds none, so he discards his opposition agent to the Sire Trigger as he passes. Late keeps his promise to pay for the Remora, as long as he can. He draws and discards a Drawn in the Lock to the Sire. David draws and his Urza Saga triggers, gaining the Construct Pumping ability. He then casts his Intuition, triggering Remora and Late draws. David still holds priority to crack his LED for triple blue, and then lets the Intuition resolve, finding an Urza, Reality Shift and a Gilded Drake. Late promptly gives him the reality shift, as he wants to keep drawing cards. David now realizes he could have been greedier and fetching some good artifacts to the bin. He does cast reality shift on the Sire of Insanity, triggering Remora and is unable to pay. David then attacks Drake and passes the turn. Bal draws and cries at the top deck. Late calls out an animate dead, and it is indeed. Bal does cast it on Drake's Dockside Extortionist, as his Sire was exiled forever. Remora triggers and Late draws. This Remora's turn cycle actually ended paying off for late. Dockside enters and Bal gets 6 treasures, with 3 he casts his commander, Florian Voldaren Sion, and then proceeds to combat, sending the manifest at late. In his second main phase, Florian triggers and he looks at the top 2 cards, exiling one and casting it, a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, before passing. Drake draws and casts a Talisman of Hierarchy, feeding the fish, and then he passes. Late is now unable to pay for the fish, letting it sink. He draws and plays a Swamp, he then casts a Una's backguard and passes with 3 cards in hand, the single player with cards actually. David draws and his Urza Saga triggers, he holds priority and activates it to create a construct. He then tutors for an either spell bomb to the field and passes the turn. Bal draws and jumps straight into combat, attacking Drake with Ragavan and the other 2 creatures towards late. 
Rag event triggers exiling a faithless looting, and Bal actually forgets to create a treasure. Florian then triggers and Bal looks at the top 7 cards, exiling one. He plays an untapped blood crypt, taking two, and then casts the exiled card, a vampiric tutor, searching for a Grenzo Havoc Razor, as he sees it to be the best option for card advantage at the moment. We're now on Drake's turn, he plays a wooded foothills and cracks it for a tapped blood crypt. He then casts his commander, Alesha, who smiles at death, and passes the turn. Late top decks a Gitaxin probe that he casts, asking if someone was not hell bent, and David is the only player with a card in hand. David reveals to him a Winds of Rebuke that he hopes to use on the Cursed Totem. Later draws, plays a Swamp and then casts Dothy Voidwalker, which enters with a plus one plus one counter due to Una's Black Guard. He attacks Baal with Una's Black Guard and passes. David draws, plays a Gemstone Caverns and passes the turn. Baal draws, noticing he missed the treasure last turn, but he is still able to cast his Grenzo Havoc Razor. He then goes to combat and sends every creature at late, for 7 damage, triggering Grenzo 3 times and Ragavan as well. Ragavan exiles Vilis, and Baal then goads both creatures from late and exiles another card from late's library. He then goes to his second main phase, triggering Florian, and looks at the top 7 cards of his library, finding and casting a Rakdos Signet, and then he casts late's Soaring Thought Thief for another evasive attacker, before passing. Drake draws and plays a Prismatic Vista, which he cracks for a planes, exiling the Vista to the Dothy. He then goes to combat and attacks late with Alesha, triggering her and paying to return Recruiter of the Guard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It triggers and he searches for a Sarah Ascended to his hand, which he casts in his second main phase before passing. Late gets to his turn and momentarily forgets about Ball's board, as he goes for an Imperial Seal, searching for a Time Twister to the top, hoping to refill his hand. He then attacks Dothy at Drake and Una at David, as both creatures are goaded. Drake gets to the threshold of 30 life and hopes no one can change that in the turn cycle. We're now on David's turn, he draws and is forced to pass, slowly trying to accrue some cards. Bal draws and goes right into the red zone, sending all his terrestrial creatures towards late and a flying soaring thought thief towards David, triggering and each of Bal's opponents mills too. Late does get the other 4 cards exiled with void counters. Grenzo triggers 5 times, and Ragavan as well. Bal gets a treasure, goes the Viz construct, and Late's Dothy, and then exiles 4 cards from the top of Late's library. He then goes to his second main phase, asking David if he wants to blow his spell bomb, but David keeps it steady, hoping for a more crucial moment. Florian triggers, and Bal looks at the top 11 cards, exiling one, and casting it, a Mayhem Devil. Bal then cracks a treasure for mana, triggering the Devil and pinging Drake for one, putting him below 30 life and therefore cracks the other treasure for mana pinging Sarah Ascendant and exiling them to Dothy. He then uses the mana to turn the manifest upside and revealing a Magus of the Moon before passing. Drake draws and ponders his options, as Magus of the Moon just deprived him of much needed black mana. He does cast the drawn Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Recruiter of the Guard as an additional cost, which triggers Mayhem Devil and Bal thinks for a bit but ends up sending the ping towards Alesha, because the Vid still has a crackable spell bomb in case things turn south. Drake tutors for Skyclave Apparition that he casts, entering and exiling Ball's Grenzo as it is generating him too much value. He passes and late is still not finding much fuel. He goes to combat and attacks David with a goaded Dothy, which triggers Una, making David discard a card and he discards a Mana Crypt, being exiled to Dothy. He then casts a Rhystic Study and passes the turn. David draws and casts a Back to Basics. Rhystic triggers, but he doesn't pay to have Spellbomb at the ready. He then attacks late with a goaded Construct and passes the turn. Balan taps, draws and after some pondering, casts the top decked card, a Grief, for its evoke cost, so it would enter and be sacrificed, to trigger Mayhem Devil, Rhystic triggers and he does pay for it. But since late has the most cards in hand, he responds with a Force of Will, pitching a Passer Might. Balan goes to combat and sends all creatures towards the vid, Soaring Thought Thief triggers and his opponents mill too, four of which are exiled to late's Dothy. David ends up not blocking, so Ragavan triggers for a treasure and exiles an island. Florian then triggers and Bal looks at the top 12 cards from his library. He exiles one, which he casts, cracking a treasure for red, triggering Mayhem Devil and killing Una's Black Guard. He uses the Signet to generate Black Red to cast Pyroblast on David's back to basics, paying for the Rhystic trigger and passing afterwards. Drake draws and believes Bal was relying on him to kill late, so he goes into combat and attacks with both creatures at Bal, triggering Alesha and paying it to return Grand Abolisher to the battlefield, tapped and attacking David. On his second main phase, he casts a Glow Rider, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. He then passes the turn. Later draws, plays a Prismatic Mountain, and then after some consideration, he cracks his Dothy to cast the Vids back to basics, triggering Mayhem Devil and Bal pings late. We're back at the vid, he simply draws, ponders for a moment, but decides to pass, holding some interaction. Bal goes straight into combat. 
He sends Ragavan and Soaring Thought Thief at late in case he flashes in a blocker. Magus of the Moon at the vid, which he reads through the lines, and doesn't block, and the other two creatures go towards Drake. Soaring Thought Thief triggers and they mill the top two. Drake does shun Florian with Glow Rider and late eventually perishes, taking the Soaring Thought Thief with him. Ragavan triggers, giving Bali treasure, and then he goes to his second main phase, triggering Florian, and he looks at the top 9 cards, exiling one to cast. He cracks a treasure, triggering the Devil and pinging Emery, and then he casts the Exile Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Magus of the Moon and pinging Emery once again. He tutors for his own Dockside Extortionist. He plays a Phyrexian Tower and then casts the Dockside. In response, the Vid cracks the Either Spell Bomb, bouncing Mayhem Devil, triggering it, and Bal pings Alesha with it. Dockside then enters and triggers for 6 treasures. Bal recasts Mayan Devil and then still cracks one more treasure just to ping Alesha to death before passing. Drake draws and plays an exotic Orchard. He does recast Alesha, knowing that they might be pinged to death again and then passes. David gets to his turn and recasts Emery with her reduced cost. She enters and triggers milling 4 cards, and what a bummer for David, losing access to those. We're now back to Ball's turn, he draws and plays a Scalding Tarn, that he cracks, triggering Mayhem Devil and pinging the construct. He then finds a Badlands and then cracks the other two treasures for black, triggering Mayhem Devil and pinging the construct to death. With that mana, he activates Leash Ridden Swamp, making his opponents lose one life each. He then goes to combat and attacks everything at David, who blocks the monkey with Emery. Florian then triggers and he looks at the top 9 cards from his library, exiling and casting an Imperial Seal, searching for a Corpse Dance to the top before passing. Drake draws and goes right into combat, sending all his creatures towards Baal, triggering Alesha and paying for their trigger to return Glow Rider to the battlefield. Baal takes 9 damage and Drake passes. David gets to his turn and Glow Rider messes a little bit with his plans, so he's forced to pass. Baal draws and goes into combat, sending all his creatures towards David, so he's forced to respond with Winds of Rebuke on Florian. However, in response, Baal sacrifices his Dockside with Phyrex and Tower, triggering Mayhem Devil and pinging Glow Rider. With the double black, he casts Corpse Dance on his Dockside Extortionist with Buyback to return it to the battlefield, triggering and creating 5 treasures. With those 5 treasures, he generates enough mana to recast Corpse Dance once again with Buyback and triggering Mayhem Devil 5 times. Two of those triggers are aimed directly at Dockside to kill it, and the other three are aimed at Drake, up to the point where he can kill both Drake and David at the same time. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! Despite the fast start from David, the turn 1 curse totem stopped him in his tracks, followed by a turn 2 Sire of Insanity, which totally warped the game around the grinding potential of Florian, as Drake unfortunately didn't find any early hate bears. And being last in turn order didn't help late, despite repetitive attempts at getting back in the game. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Burr, Ajimo, Dragon Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina and Michael Bowen, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!